I'm joined by Felix Barassa Moreau, a climber and engineer from Montreal, and also the founder and creator of a system called Entralpy or Entropy for Anglophiles like me. How are you doing, Felix? I'm going good. How are you? Doing well. Thanks, man. Uh, let's start with the basics. So what is Entropy? Yeah, uh, just for... Uh, yeah, uh, so uh, Entropy is a system that uh, uh, measures uh, uh, like finger strength on the hangboard. So it's a like first place, uh, first plate uh, based system uh, that uh, assess uh, like a climbing specific uh, strength in a multiple environment. So you can uh, uh, use it to measure uh, yep strength on the hangboard or like any kind of uh, strength uh, for like quantifying uh, exercise. Uh, and tracking your progress. Okay, let's let's kind of give people an idea of what this is. So, can you explain what a force plate is for people that haven't seen one or used one before? Yeah, so it's a, a, a sensor, a force sensor on the ground uh, that measures the the strength. Yeah, that's uh, uh, exactly what it is. So it's a, a little bit like a, a scale, uh, but uh, our uh, like system is uh, has like faster. Uh, measurement so it's a uh, it measures uh, dynamically the strength on the ground so you can see uh, the variation of strength when you're pulling into a, a hangboard or like any kind of grip so if you uh, pull like uh, on a you can also use it like with a portable board or with uh, like any kind of other equipment such as uh, like side poles uh, you can try like uh, compression and measure uh, uh, how much uh, weight you're taking off the floor. So, so, so this unit, the the uh, the plate I just showed, that sits on the floor, and you stand on that, right? So it's basically, um, as you pull up on the hangboard, it's basically telling you how much weight you're taking off. Is that the idea of it? Yeah, exactly. Okay. And uh, it's guided through the app. So it, uh, the uh, like first plate is connected to a, a app, and uh, you you can see uh, as you are doing the exercise. Uh, the strength you're applying, and uh, you can uh, get uh, like guidelines from the application. So you see like when to pull, when to stop, and uh, the, then you have like analytics that are uh, uh, made by the application. Okay, so do so. This uh, unit is a force plate uh, and a phone app, right? Those are just the two components of it. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so do I need to have like a specific setup at my home or my gym to use this? Or can I use it with whatever hangboard at wherever gym? Or do I need to use like exactly the hangboards that you want me to use for it? That's a good question. Uh, like you can use uh, you can use it with any hangboard actually. So you can uh, use it uh, with uh, like uh, any uh, like uh, any kind of a hangboard and right in the setting of the exercise you did. Uh, which hangboard you were uh, using as you were uh, doing it. Okay. So cool. uh, and even uh, like uh, uh, I've uh, often like lived in uh, apartments where I could not uh, like grill a hangboard into the door frame. Sure. Yeah. So I was uh, yeah. So I was uh, using the like uh, just the the frames of the door to uh, to pull on. Oh nice. Or like anything. Yeah. Cool. So, uh, uh, okay, so uh, first of all, I just for myself, I'm really curious about how these things work. So the first one I want to ask is, is is this a wireless system? Does it need a uh, power outlet or is it like battery operated? How how does this all work? Yeah, it's a uh, battery operated. So okay. it's a uh, via Bluetooth okay. and it's connected to the and actually like the app is a web based app. So you can use it uh, on your phone, uh, but also on your computer or tablet. Okay. Um, now it's with force plates because they like it's um uh, it's measuring force, but that can be affected based on what the plate is sitting on. I'm guessing you want people to use this on like a concrete floor, right? If, uh, if I have like say carpet under my hangboard, is there a way I can use it there or should I always have a hard surface? Uh, yeah, it's uh, better to have a hard surface and uh, mostly like for, uh, like if you measure like, uh, like contact strength or like a uh, rate of force development evaluation, it's better that your surface is all rigid. Uh, but the, you can use a, a piece of wood or just like any rigid uh, plate to uh, uh, have it under uh, over your carpet and it will work as well. To, okay. uh, 
Cool. Um, I want to, so when I was first told a couple of years ago, uh, I was interviewing somebody and I asked them, yo, what's going on in Quebec? Like who's doing the cool stuff in climbing? And this was years ago and they mentioned you and the stuff you were working on uh, at that time. So I'm kind of curious how you got into uh, developing this. Like I, I understand, I know you're a climber because you have one of those like climber names. Uh, yourself and your <laughs> brother have been climbing for a long time. <laughs> Uh, and then, of course, I know you're an engineer, so it makes sense that these things yeah, actually, come together. Yeah, actually, I'm an engineering student. But yeah. oh, okay, I didn't student, sorry. My, I didn't graduate yet. Okay, but, I gave uh, you a promotion. I'm just calling you an engineer already. <laughs> yeah. Whatever, it's all good. Yeah. Um, so uh, what was the impetus to start this? Uh, was it something that you wanted to use for yourself, or did you just see it as a, an opportunity on the market? Uh, it was uh, actually like the first... Uh, uh, I did it first for myself. Uh, we were... Uh, like, uh, as you said, like, uh, I come from a climbing family and uh, I have like two, we're like five brothers, but uh, three of us. Five brothers? Lot. I've yeah. only met two of you now. Okay, wow, jeez. Yeah. We have uh, like this uh, punch card to get uh, like cake from our brother. <laughs> if you meet all of us, uh, you can get a uh, free cake. <laughs> Sweet, I got to get one of those. <laughs> yeah. And uh, the, um, uh, so uh, we were like the, the three youngest, we're... Um, uh, like very into rock climbing mm -hmm. and we wanted we look at like different ways we were doing like hangboarding uh, campus boarding and all kinds of uh, like exercise we could do and we started using like a uh, uh, just like analog scales uh, with a display mm -hmm. to measure your uh, like single finger strength and do like all sorts of exercise that we could do uh, uh, with it so uh, and then the it was cool but the um, uh, the thing is that you cannot, like as soon as your eyes come off the display, you're losing all what you've been doing. So you don't really, uh, like, uh, and it, it's a lot of math to like calculate like how much uh, like you take off to uh, to get like stats from it. So um, uh, when I started like uh, learning programming in school and in uh, like internships, uh, I coded my own uh, system using the Wii Balance Board. So I was uh, like I hacked uh, uh, we and got like the information on my computer <laughs> and this was the yeah so uh, at first we were like uh, the brothers we were training with this yeah and then uh, like uh, I made like more systems for friends and uh, in the yeah so and then I went to like so uh, were, were you were you using the so this is the Nintendo Wii balance board that you use for like <laughs> yeah, the exactly. snowboarding games and stuff right yeah, that's it. <laughs> okay cool. <laughs> And uh, everyone, uh, all the climbers started like buying Wii's, <laughs> like to get uh, <laughs> and the app. Uh, so and in the beginning, like the app changed a lot. I made like a lot of uh, versions of it. To uh, in the beginning, it was only I was like working on Linux computers. Okay. Uh, so uh, I made it like on uh, uh, like micro computers in uh, like Raspberry Pi, mm -hmm. and I would uh, I have like one of the <laughs> one of these. It's uh, I would like send the micro computers to people <laughs> nice. so that they could use. Uh, <laughs> the the system with it and uh, so yeah and then uh, I made like a, a Windows uh, app uh, out of it and uh, it uh, uh, and more like uh, it and then I, this uh, was something I could share to people like sure. uh, I send it by email or things like this and uh, with like easier setup and then uh, more recently uh, I realized that the like we balance board is nice. But it has drawbacks as well. Mm -hmm. uh, like it doesn't connect with uh, like modern uh, Bluetooth technologies, okay. and uh, it's pretty big. Like it's hard to carry around and things like this. So uh, I made my own uh, uh, device for it. So okay, cool. I made like, multiple. Yeah. Um, two years ago, you were at the Canadian Climbing Medicine Symposium. You were presenting there, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so even two years ago, you you had a, a set of findings that you wanted to share with people. What kind of information were you giving then, and and what feedback were you hearing back from that kind of um, like that's a community of physiotherapists and doctors. It's a very specific set of climbers, right? So, what kind of feedback were they giving you at that point? Uh, pretty, uh, I had pretty good feedback from it. Uh, I was uh, like, I think the uh, for all like the uh, injury prevention and all the uh, things that are like to, to prevent uh, injuries and to, to uh, an better analyze an injury and to go back to climbing faster. Uh, I think it's quite useful to have uh, like precise metrics on the injury and to see uh, how things you can uh, like adjust the intensity uh, very easily and uh, make like all sorts of uh, rehabilitation protocol. Cool. So, uh, 
so that's uh, uh, that was a pretty good feedback from the like medical uh, like climbing uh, medical community and uh, I, I could uh, there's a, a physiotherapist in Montreal uh, called Julien Deschenaux who uh, specialize in rock climbers and uh, now he's like only working uh, uh, in uh, he has like his clinic in a climbing gym and he's only working with uh, patients who climbs and uh, he has been using Entralpy for uh, since uh, like three years now and uh, I could uh, present some of his findings uh, using it uh, at the Congress. So cool. this was also like pretty interesting to uh, uh, to share uh, like real uh, use cases mm -hmm. and uh, things like this. So, so if somebody in, in a physiotherapist role dealing with a climber, I'm guessing they're looking for uh, information on on, let's say, like how much weight are you able to take on your index finger? after an injury compared to before or how is it recovering over time so with with a system like this i guess you can use just a single finger on the hangboard pull as hard as you can and that tells you kind of how strong that finger is and then you can try it for the other fingers and then i guess over time you can just plot how each finger is getting stronger right that's the idea with uh with how a physiotherapist would use it yeah that's it that's uh, like one of the way uh he uh, uses it and uh, it's uh, uh, pretty interesting to compare, like uh, when someone injures a finger on one side, you can compare with like the healthy side. Or uh, if someone has done like a test before uh, getting injured, then you can see like what uh, was the state of his fingers before the injury so that you can uh, know like when uh, your strength is back and when uh, like at which uh, like intensity you get like quantifiable uh, data on the injury. So. Uh, uh, so this is one of the use case uh, another um, uh, and to see like how uh, during the week how it progressed and uh, the, it has also been used with people who had uh, like chronic pain and uh, to do like uh, to vary the type of exert the type of load that you'll have on the fingers so that uh, the physiotherapist can provide like a sort of like training plan that would uh, uh, get another kind of uh, uh, stimulation in the fingers so that uh, they can uh, uh, get better at it. So, uh, did, so this, yeah. Did you find, because uh, I know we always talk about like a, um, the compensating. Uh, so if you have an injured part of your body, the other parts of your body will try and uh, compensate for those weaknesses. Um, is that something that you have started to discover? Like if, if somebody has a weakness in their middle finger, do you see the strength of the other fingers really go mm -hmm. up? Yeah, that's a good, very good question because uh, that's uh, something I've been uh, uh, seeing in the uh, assessment from uh, individual fingers of people. Uh, you often see that uh, like there's no difference from one end to the other, uh, but the repetition of strength in the fingers uh, will be like completely different. And really? uh, this, yeah, uh, for some people you see like a big weak weakness in the finger, mm -hmm. and uh, on, on this side uh, the other fingers are much stronger than on the other side. And, so, uh, like, so like on, on one hand, the, the weight is kind of spread out more evenly, but on the other hand, you've got like your two middle fingers taking all of it and you've got like weak, yeah, is that exactly. what you're saying? Like it's out of balance? Yeah. yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> cool. Yeah. That's and uh, I think like the, uh, this could be a way to, um, uh, the, well, the, this is interesting to see in advance if uh, someone has uh, some a finger that is, uh, that suddenly has uh, like, uh, pain at a certain intensity, you can see that uh, faster than uh, uh, waiting uh, uh, before you get injured, uh, like real injury into it. So. Okay. Um, so this this is a, um, is this a single axis force plate? I feel like that's probably what makes sense. You don't need like the three axis yeah, exactly. force plates. Yeah. Okay. So it yep. just measures the pressure in one direction. Yeah. Um, are there limits to the system in terms of uh, like it always requires you to basically be hanging downwards. So I'm guessing this isn't always perfect for measuring um, strains when it goes from like the elbows to the shoulders. Do you, can you use it for other uh, other motions rather than just pulling down? Uh, yeah, uh, like you can uh, like adapt the system. So you can use uh, it in like creative ways, uh, like uh, pushing on it or like uh, using it in, in different ways. Uh, but the... It's always like the to use uh, like it's better. It's like one direction, so you uh, so for uh, like lifted force from the shoulders, 
it has also been used to see like iron cross or like all sort of like other exercise or to see like um and there were some of the users who used it to uh, test like how uh, the progression for like gymnastic exercise such as uh, like uh, front levers or uh, other kinds of exercise so the assisting person would be standing on the the sensor and uh, you'd measure like the the variation of strength to see like how far you are uh, from doing uh, uh, like any kind of exercise like this so okay cool there are like a lot of different ways to all right, I want to I want to pull up the picture of the 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 app on the phone. So when you're using this, um, what's the information? Uh, like we see some different graphs on the screen here. First of all, like what units? Uh, I guess can you use it in uh, in like? Sorry, is it measuring like pounds and kilograms? How do you communicate uh, the the strength of uh, of yourself when you're using this app? Yeah, uh, the app is now in uh, kilograms, but okay. there's going to be uh, like a, a setting to change uh, from like pounds to kilograms. Okay. Uh, but you see, uh, like on the display, uh, this is like the analysis after an exercise. Okay. And you see, like uh, on the the top part, you see like some key metrics, uh, such as the like uh, it automatically like make the uh, analysis of the data. So you see, uh, like uh, how many uh, hangs someone uh, did. So this was like a three hangs. Okay. And you see like the uh, average time of every hang uh, that someone has done and the average strength uh, that is uh, in between the, the hangs. Okay, so in that graph in the center of the screen, there uh, when, the, when the graph goes up high, that is when you're engaged on the hang board, right? Uh, yeah, exactly. And then the little dips is, I guess, when you let go of the hang board and all of your weight is back on the, on the board. That's it. Okay, cool. Um, so, and you said this is this is a picture from when the workout is over. So, when you're using the uh, when you're actually like in the workout, what is your phone showing at that point? Like, is the sample rate fast enough that it's like actively showing you how much weight you're taking off as you pull? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it is. Wicked. So you see, uh, you see like the graph, and you see the data uh, on your phone. So. Sure. Cool. And uh, uh, there's like a raw mode, and there's a like instruction mode that guides you through the exercise. Okay, so the, the raw mode is it's just taking readings, I guess, and it just shows you the information it's getting. What does the exercise mode uh, show? Uh, it will show like uh, guidelines. So the like guidelines on like when to pull, uh, when to relax, and any kind of exercise. So it's still like the app is still, uh, we're still like building like new features on the app, uh, but we have like uh, basic uh, guidelines. And then there's gonna be like more uh, added like workouts that you have. Uh, the guidelines on when to uh, uh, like when to pull, when to relax, uh, when you should pull like harder, uh, based on your uh, evaluation of strength. So, so you're saying you could like uh, this would have like built-in workouts, and as you're pulling, it can tell you like first of all how long you should be holding on for, and when to let go, <laughs> and when to rest, and when to exercise. But it could also say, hey, you're not like trying hard enough. Is that the idea? Yeah, yeah. that's it. Yeah. <laughs> that's all, that's like the coach everybody needs is uh, is that kind of app. That's that's really cool. Um, yeah. So so for something like that, the the next question because you mentioned it is how how would this system develop over time i'm guessing the uh once you buy this system with the force plate you probably don't have a reason to buy a force plate in the future like if it still works mm -hmm. it's still doing the same job so how would the app itself develop over time i guess you'll add more workouts and things like that but do you foresee uh other things you want to add in or different ways of interpreting the data or what what features would you like to add in the future yeah, uh, that's a good question. I think uh, a lot of it from will come from like how uh, people interact with the feature. So uh, like a lot of the development has been done with what uh, people find like interesting to use. Uh, the, there's gonna be like new uh, like workouts in the in the app, and uh, like possibility to share with coaches so that uh, your coach can uh, coaches and like friends so that you can uh, uh, share your workout and see how people progress. And to have, uh, we want to add like a dashboard so that uh, a team coach can see uh, like the profile of everyone he's training and uh, how their training is going. So like if they want to, like we already have a built-in uh, like following um, uh, system. So like uh, the, someone you can uh, like uh, make a follow request and someone can like approve or decline uh, your request to get uh, to share your data with. Okay. And uh, the so this is gonna be a, a interesting feature 
for the and the, a, a lot of the interesting part are from the analytics of the data. Sure. So uh, getting uh, like more analysis on what uh, which workout works well and uh, how the workout can be improved to have uh, like better influence on climbers to mm -hmm. see uh, and not just like we're we're really focused on like strength and like static strength which mm -hmm. is important in climbing uh, but also like the stem also measures like power and uh, like rate of force development and uh, like other kinds of uh, measurements that uh, are as interesting so depending on like your finger profile your position if you're more uh, uh, like which kind of position you're gripping your mm -hmm. shoulder position and uh, all kinds of parameters like this so okay so just like let me go off on a tangent for a second if you if you just <laughs> take this force plate in a climbing gym but you don't use hangboards like what are some of the the ways you can use this to to measure power like is it something where well i guess uh, I know with force plates, you can measure like if you're doing uh, box jumps, things like that, just like how you're developing force as you jump off of a floor. Um, have you messed around yourself with other ways of using this in a climbing? So, like I know you used a, a Nintendo Wii to mess around, so you've probably done some <laughs> crazy shit. Uh, but uh, how else have you played with it aside from with hangboards? Uh, uh, I've played also like with compression or like side poles to see like how much, but you can uh, like uh, mess around. I think it's important, like climbing is all about playing. Yeah. So uh, I think like for training as well, we should involve more of like playing and like exploring our bodies and uh, things like this. So it's, uh, I think it's important to have fun with it. Uh, the, I've, I've looked at like the strength you, you pull like on side poles uh, to uh, like how much you can lift from a side pole or like other uh, analytics like this so that you can uh, like compare with it. Mm -hmm. And uh, like just grabbing, like uh, I make like grabs. So uh, I advance the first plate a, a little bit and then uh, I let myself go and grab into the fingerboard. So uh, to see uh, like the, uh, the end to high coordination from grabbing into like a pocket or into a, a crimp so that you can uh, be like very precise. And it's sort mm. of uh, like it, in con it conditions your body to um, always uh, grip, you know, like when you do like a, a dynamic motion mm -hmm. and you're, um, uh, you're, uh, you don't have time to think to uh, if you're going to hold the grip or not. It's something that is like unconscious. Sure. And by uh, practicing it, doing like uh, five or like 10 times of uh, like grabs, you get uh, your body used to this uh, like specific, the specific position you're in mm -hmm. to generate the force really fast. So it's a... Uh, uh, so I find that's a very interesting way to yeah. like build power uh, in someone who uh, might like not be suited for like campus board or other things like this. And it's more like it's focused on this uh, grabbing part. So. Okay, cool. Um, so we're talking because uh, it sounds like you're getting close to the point where you're ready to launch this thing. And my understanding is you're going to start with a Kickstarter, I guess, for this. Mm -hmm. cool. Yeah, that's so, it. So uh, at launch, what is this thing? Uh, who who is it built for like who do you see purchasing this we talked about it's it's obviously something that's great for physiotherapists because it gives so much information uh coaches for the same reason um what's the launch price for it and is it appropriate for like an every man climber just the regular guy to have one of these uh yeah uh, actually that's the goal like the uh, i'm sure you as yeah. you as the business owner you'd like everybody to have one right <laughs> yeah but i think it's very useful for people to for climbers and I think it's going to have like a huge impact mm -hmm. to have like real data and uh, like both for in a research perspective, but also in a use perspective to get access to like uh, training that are based on like peer reviewed research and that you get uh, like the all the the recommendations you get are from a, like solid uh, base. I think it's very interesting for someone to have this at home to mm -hmm. uh, uh, so, and the price is uh, designed for uh, home users. So, for either like for home users and also to uh, allow like gyms to have multiple so that uh, like teams can train with it. Or uh, like uh, I've been doing like uh, uh, workshops with uh, groups of people. So, uh, like uh, uh, we have like uh, in uh, one of our gym in Montreal, we have like core ups uh, workshop and we also have like finger ups uh, workshop. So, uh, people. Uh, uh, go for like a 30 minute finger session cool. and uh, everyone has uh, like a system and they, they can like test their strength and uh, like make a, a small like finger training training in group so uh, so yeah so the, the goal is really to make it like a, 
uh, widely available uh, so that uh, people can start using it in any con context. If, uh, if me as a coach or uh, me as like a, a gym manager wanted to buy one of these for my gym, is it easy for multiple people to use the same system? Uh, like if, uh, let's say I have like a team of six climbers, is it easy for them to uh, use it with their own phones or is it best to be used by like a single uh, uh, phone or computer? Uh, yeah, you can use it. Uh, you can connect it with like multiple uh, phones, okay. uh, but not at the same time. Sure. So uh, you have to go like one after the other. Okay. So the, cool. um, so yeah, and the, the um, uh, some of the gyms I had like agreements with them, and I made them uh, like a, a tablet so that they have uh, like a fixed installation oh, where cool. uh, everyone can use it and have uh, like don't don't need uh, any like device. They already have the device on on spot nice. to, to use it. So that's really yeah. cool. Sweet. <laughs> um, okay. So uh, we'll we'll finish a little bit later and we'll talk about the price and we'll tell people where they can buy it and all that kind of stuff. But I, I, since you've been using force plates and you're uh, uh, kind of in this field of engineering and, and data analysis, um, force plates have existed in athletics for a while, right? Like they've been used especially in, in um, uh, physiotherapy and just coaching and diagnostics for a while, but we're starting to see them be experimented with more in climbing uh, lately. And climbing is fun because uh, there are so many forces and so many different axes all the time. Uh, so I'm curious if you like what kind of future you see for force plates in climbing, not just from a training perspective, but are we going to see force plates being used under mats to start measuring falls? Are we going to see them attached to holds to measure how much force people are putting uh, on the wall? Can we use them for like judging when somebody actually grabs a finish hold on a competition boulder? Like what's it? I, it feels like the sky's the limit for these if we can find ways to, to install them in the right places. So what kind of future do you see for uh, this technology? Yeah, that's a very interesting question. I've been uh, like questioning myself a lot about it sure. uh, as well. Uh, the, it's very interesting to see uh, like force on grips uh, is a very uh, interesting uh, parameter to see to compare like the different kinds of climbers uh, up to now the um, uh, devices to measure the strength on the climbing grips uh, have been quite complex to set up we have uh, like such a wall in uh, Montreal mm -hmm. but I think it was a few like hundred thousand uh, dollars to make the setup okay to, uh, yeah and uh, so it's a uh, uh, and all uh, like it's not very um it's not like uh, there, there there needs to be like new technologies to uh, have a uh, setup on climbing grips that is uh, like easy to uh, uh, to measure the strength but we're mm -hmm. like thinking about it and looking for like ways to do it cool and uh, starting at like simple uh, simple ways that have like uh, meaningful data and then uh, uh, get into more complex analysis uh, the <laughs> Uh, there's also a lot of uh, like the there's a uh, uh, ways to uh, analyze the uh, there there are like uh, in research uh, setups it's also possible to analyze what the what uh, uh, strength like uh, walls like we have in uh, McGill University uh, will allow to like analyze what climbers pull on grips and to do like research from it but the um, uh, to bring it into the facilities, it will take another step. So, okay. So, so, yeah. so but, currently, right now, if you're trying to use a force plate on a grip, uh, is it like you attach the force plate to the wall and then you attach the hold to the force plate? Or because for right now, most walls operate with like T nuts, right? And so normally yeah. the hold goes straight to the wall. I can understand that would be really hard to get a force plate in that setting but can is when you use it right now is it just like attach the hole directly to the force plate and attach that to the wall and you just measure like the pull force off that uh yeah actually like right now most of the setups are behind the wall so it's the whole really? like uh yeah it's the whole uh, like they make a like a, a, a kind of insert that is uh, but it's not like they build a wall with it inside so you okay. already have uh, the measurements in the back and that the whole like structure will measure uh, the strength that is applied to it. So you like uh, drill the hole into a part of the wall that measures the strength that you're applying to it. Really? And uh, yeah, and the interesting part about these is that they have uh, like uh, six degrees of uh, freedom. So you see 
uh, like the force pulled in uh, like any direction, but also the torque pulled in any direction. Really? So that's uh, yeah, yeah, and that's pretty interesting to see like how people uh, like bend sure. uh, the the holes. And, uh, so, uh, so yeah. when you when you talk about this setup, it's um, is it actually measuring the force on the attachment point, or is it measuring the force applied to the wall? You're saying the force plate is behind the wall. I'm trying to imagine how this is set mm -hmm. up. Yeah, it's uh, on the uh, attach point, so it's the whole uh, like attach point uh, under grip. Okay, so, gotcha. Yeah. So they're, it's they're, it's it's measuring like the torque on the bolt and and the the shear on on the kind of the bolt or the screw or whatever. Yeah, exactly. Well, in the there's it's like a, a, there are like a few different like concepts, uh, but it's the whole uh, the whole wall that the whole like attachment of it. Okay. That is, uh, so right. on the but, group, you, but you yeah. also said that this was like very expensive, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. There were like uh, studies to make, uh, like to analyze. Uh, you can get uh, like uh, uh, you can make some. Uh, 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 you can uh, analyze it without uh, as much precision for like footholds or like mm -hmm. other kinds of holds, and you can get uh, like cheaper system uh, to get just uh, if you we would like uh, instrument like a whole wall. Uh, we could use only like uh, uh, like the direction on the plane for the foot feet ho footholds because you don't uh, like torque the footholds or mm -hmm. do things like this. So it's there. But even then, uh, like if you want a uh, like pure analysis, if you see that like someone is using a, a sort of torque in the foot, it sure. would still be interesting. Too. Yeah. So like uh, if you like lose data, uh, I think there's still like missing parts of it. So sure. climbing is still like very complex. Yeah. And I think we can get a lot from uh, like video analysis. And like other kind of, uh, and we've worked also with uh, uh, like uh, just uh, like uh, nervous signal in the forearm. So to look at like how, uh, what is the nervous signal that you get into your fingers when you're climbing? You're talking about so like the electrical see. signals in your arm? Yeah, exactly. Really? <laughs> yeah. And you can get some meaningful data. Like there's a lot of noise, but you can get some meaningful data out of it. So it's uh, in terms of uh, like if indicators of like if someone is in, uh, force or in fatigue, okay. uh, you'll see like in the signal or things like this. But there's a lot of noise, sure. and there's a, a lot of like the, there's it's still we're still like far from getting uh, like the and like with the same signal, a different body will react differently, okay. and uh, with all the like the it's a, a surface mount uh, mm. electromyography. so uh, you don't get uh, the same as if you'd be like inside the muscles. All right. right. So it's so, yeah. so with the so, so we're totally we've gone yeah. off the rails entirely. But are you, are you saying like um, if if you're measuring these signals, I assumed that that would just tell you when your muscle engages or when it's relaxed. But are you saying you're you're able to, uh, um, like just measure that there's stress on the muscle at all? Like because I thought it would be like a, a one or a zero of engaged or relaxed. And you're saying mm -hmm. that within that boundary there's like a there's kind of a range that you can measure from the electrical signals yeah exactly with wow. the uh, amplitude of the signal and right. the frequency of it you can see if someone is getting like tired so like the body will react differently will get like a different signal if someone gets tired or if someone is like in pure power mm -hmm. so uh, they are like but it's more like in a uh, those are more the like things you can do in a research uh, it, uh, like it would be very interesting to bring it to people mm -hmm. uh, and i think like the I'm uh, still like looking at it at like different ways to bring it to coaches so that they can sure. uh, and like where where like which kind of data would be uh, interesting and which kind of uh, uh, like how it can become uh, like useful for someone. Uh, but I think uh, like in the this could be like uh, a possibility in the like next years to uh, to have like this sort of analysis to see That's if really someone cool. uh, like when is your climber pumped in the route like right. yeah, was he pumped or was he just uh, the uh, uh like you yeah. just like, give up yeah exactly <laughs> yeah totally that would be great for for youth climbing because they're always complaining about how tired they are and it turns out like no you aren't actually tired that's funny okay so uh back to the back to the board you're launching this thing uh what's the the price that people can expect to pay for this at launch uh yep yeah, so there's gonna be a discount at launch uh, on the launch day uh, and uh, there's a discount for like the Kickstarter to uh, like the the goal of the Kickstarter is to make this project uh, like viable uh, for like a lot of people. So uh, if like enough people 
uh, like support, uh, it's gonna be possible to bring it to like everyone for like a cheap price. Mm -hmm. And uh, the so the like retail price will be like two hundred Canadian dollars. Uh, and uh, then the like uh, Kickstarter price will be uh, uh, like uh, 175 Canadian okay. dollar, and uh, there's gonna be a discount for uh, like early uh, uh, people to support sure. it. Sure, so. cool man, that's really awesome. I'm I'm excited, <laughs> and I, I I liked hearing about how uh, how some gyms were installing uh, like st a station for it. That's really interesting. Like for me, <laughs> I don't. Um, like I'm way past the point where I'm training for anything. Like I don't train anymore. <laughs> so, so I struggle to like be interested in that stuff. But from like a gym management perspective, this sounds like a really cool service that you want to offer all of those climbers who hit a plateau or get injured. It would be such a good tool for your instructors and your coaches to, to, to just like offer more information to people and, and like really good information, right? Like it's so <laughs> easy when somebody's in and like, oh, my finger's been hurting for a couple of weeks and this can, can kind of help give you uh, some actual information and a, a, like a legit service to your customers. So that's really intriguing. That's cool, man. <laughs> um, thank you very much for spending this time to talk about this system. That's uh, and I know you still have to graduate too. So hopefully, <laughs> hopefully this all goes well and you can like pay for the rest of your school and all that kind of stuff. And hopefully we see this thing on the market soon. Um, I think this is going to publish on uh, Monday, uh, what, uh, Monday the 9th. Uh, is, is that the launch day? Uh, for uh, the actually, like we're hosting like a, a event to uh, like show to uh, people in Montreal okay. on uh, Monday the 9th. Okay, and perfect. it will open on Kickstarter uh, on Tuesday, uh, okay. Tuesday morning at uh, 10. Wicked. So if you're in Montreal, there will be an event. Where's the event being held in Montreal? Uh, it's in the Beta Lounge. Uh, it's in the downtown Montreal. Okay, it's, uh, cool. The, there's oh, a is that the wall. Arcteryx uh, Beta yeah, exactly. Lounge thing? Okay, I've yeah. never been there, but sick. It's cool yeah, that it's they built nice. a little wall. That's nice. <laughs> yeah. Cool. So watch watch this podcast in the morning and then go to the Beta Lounge in the afternoon <laughs> to try this thing out. And then on Tuesday, uh, buy it. Um, and what website can they uh, find this all at? Uh, it's going to be on, on Kickstarter uh, okay. directly, uh, but you can find it also on uh, entropy.com. Okay. So. And you can also find the Instagram. I've got the, I think I've got the right Instagram handle right yeah. under <laughs> Felix's face. So that's perfect. Uh, okay. Well, thanks very much, Felix. I appreciate your time. Uh, and, uh, and we'll talk to you in the next one. Uh, thanks everybody for watching. If you enjoyed this, make sure you give it a like and subscribe. And of course, go over to uh, entropy.com to, uh, to see when you can get your hands on this very cool system. We'll see you guys in the next one. Yeah, thank you very much for this awesome podcast. It's uh, amazing. <laughs> no worries. Thanks, bud. We'll see you next time.